What's up, you guys? Hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome to another week of remote learning. We're going to jump right on in. Where we left off last time was talking about triplets, okay? And we left off by doing number 118. We are going to um, jump a little bit or just go to go on to the next one, which is number 119. And we're going to incorporate triplets in a piece of music that you guys are going to know pretty well. Um, where this is the march from the Nutcracker. The march is, means the march for the march of the toy soldiers. Um, this is going to be one that I guarantee the majority of you are going to recognize. It is a duet, so we are going to do both A and B. Um, for right now, we're just going to look at A. Now, it incorporates triplets here at the very beginning, but the second half of the piece, um, in my opinion, is the trickier part because we have all these dotted eight followed by sixteenths. One, a two, a three, a four. One, a two, a three, a four. Okay, having that subdivision in your head is going to help a lot. Da, 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 Okay, that's what's going to be the, the trickiest component of this. The triplets are not really too bad here at the beginning. The other uh, kind of weird thing about this one is if you look at your key signature, it's a different key signature than what we are normally playing in, okay? That adds a little bit of uh, a little bit of difficulty. Okay, so I'm gonna do line A, then we'll we'll talk about it, then we'll do line B, and we'll talk about it. Here we go. The triplets are really not the, the difficult part. It's these dotted eighths followed by sixteenths. Um, now, line B is the exact same rhythm, uh, except for you notice how when line A was resting, okay, that's when line B is going to be playing. It's kind of a trade-off with the melody, so line B will play the melody. And then the next measure, when line B is playing, that's when line A came back in and carried the melody over. Okay, so here we go. Here's line B. <laughs> That's all there is to it. We're not going to see too much uh, use of triplets in our music that we're going to be like playing for class. Um, usually when it comes to triplets, we see them once in a blue moon, and, and usually it's in contexts like this where we only see it a couple times. Um, it's not going to be used a dramatic amount. Okay? All right. Uh, we are going to move on to number 121. Okay? Uh, scale study, we are learning a new note, okay, for some of you. For example, um, alto sax, your high C sharp, that is just your register key, nothing else pressed down. And then high D is, we're using uh, one of our side keys for that, as well as with the register key. For trumpet, our high F sharp is middle valve, and then high G is open, just like the octave lower than that, okay. And then for trombone, we have second position high E and then first position high F, just like the octave below. Now, whenever I, when, whenever I get to these notes, I always tell my students, um, it's okay if you're not hitting these notes initially. Because these are pretty much the highest notes that you're going to be asked to play in middle school. And I don't know why they decide to introduce it in seventh grade. They just do. Um... They just find it a good time, but the, the likelihood that you're actually going to be playing one of these notes in your pieces of music is pretty slim, um, and even then, you're only going to have, like, once or twice. It's not going to be coming up a whole lot, okay? But using these notes, we are going to be able to play a scale in 121, and they are incorporating some triplets in here just to kind of give you some more practice on triplets, okay? Here we go. Okay, 
So that's way, way up there. And again, we're not going to see that too often. So if you're having difficulty hitting it, do not stress yourself over that, okay? Um, I really only want to do one more um, today, and that is number 123, 124 kind of combined together. This is um, another rhythm that we are incorporating where if you take a, a quarter note followed by an eighth note with two sixteenths, okay? So the example they put at number 123, we're, we're going to tie together that quarter note and the eighth note to make it a dotted quarter note. So this is like when I was telling you guys how like 90% of the time a dotted quarter note is immediately followed by one eighth note, and then 9% of the time it's just flip-flopped where that single eighth note is first, then the dotted quarter note. This is that other 1% of the time. The other 1% is instead of it being a dotted quarter note followed by one eighth note, it's a dotted quarter note followed by two sixteenth notes because we broke that eighth note into two equal notes. That's the only difference, okay? So um, in 123, the rhythm that we have is one, two, E, and a three, and four. One, two, and a three, and four. Now we tie it. One, and two, and a three, and four. And then again, one, and two, and a three, and four. Okay? Oh, sorry, I, I went on autopilot there at the end. The last message is just one, and two, and a three, and four. Half note there. Okay? Now, 124 is literally just taking that same rhythm and applying notes to it, okay? So if we apply notes to it. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now, I know that we're still about 20-ish more numbers away from where we really want to end up. Um, and we are going to have one more video next week, but the next week is probably going to be the last video that we do because the end of the year is, is, is coming up, and I'm, I'm not going to put anything out in June. Um, so I, and don't let that stress you out because next year we are going to be grouped together in just that one eighth grade band. Um, the thing that I'm going to do, though, is because you know some people are able to do this online stuff, some people are just not able to do it, which means there's going to be some people that have completely missed all the stuff that I've done. So we're going to be doing still quite a lot of review. So even the stuff that we've already done, we're going to be going over some of that again. Plus, we're going to be going over, again, the stuff that we haven't even got to yet in, in this book. So if you're feeling like a little bit overwhelmed, it's okay. Because next year is going to be a very unique year. It's going to be a lot of review style stuff um, to try and just make up for lost ground. Okay? If you do have any other questions, though, please feel free to let me know. And I hope to see you soon. Love you. Miss you.